Today, Messy Suitcase is here at Casa Bacardi, the rum factory in Catano. We're going to take our second rum tour in a week. Only today, it's mixology. So we're going to learn how to mix mojitos and pina coladas, and also get a little bit of the tour of Bacardi rum, which Puerto Ricans will tell you is actually Cuban. But for me, it's very exciting to finally be on a Bacardi rum tour. So vamos! Everybody's got their Christmas tree. Here the barrel Christmas trees. This is where it all starts. Ticket check-in and it's also where it all where, this is also where it ends. You sit around and drinking. They're gonna tell us what all this is for a little later on. Oh, see the barrels in there. Okay. This is where many members of the Bacardi family still come and gather to celebrate the many different anniversaries. And for one of those anniversaries, to be more specific, for the 150th anniversary of the company, our former master blender, Joe Gomez, he created, he crafted a special base for all of the master blenders within the family to come here and make their own, their own blends of rum. So as you're able to see here, each of these barrels belong to a member of the Bacardi family. And they came into this very room after they had blended all these rums together. And I mean, cousins and, and primos, you know, and brothers and sisters, they were all just trying out all the different creations that they had done, all right? And after all, everybody tried, what everybody else had made, they chose a winner, and we keep that bottle in a very special place here in Casa Bacardi, which is next to my punch locator. You know what I mean? When I come into my ship, I'm trying every day not to take it home with me. It looks so good. All right? So as I mentioned, you're able to continue on. Hey, Mercedes. All right, so as I mentioned, you're able to continue on the ship. Thank you. And this is all the barrels of the names of the family. Well, they are now empty because, you know, they came here, they party, they drank the whole thing, and now we keep uh, just their memories of that time. So, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the family history, shall we? Come on with me over to this side. So I'm going to explain and tell you a little bit more about how this brand was born. Now, as I was saying before, our founder, Don Facundo Acadima, so, he revolutionized this uh, rum making process, okay? He went on a 10 year journey to make and to tame what rum was. Because back then, nobody wanted to have rum. It was just for the pirates, you know? They would uh, think that it would kill the demons of inside of them, you know? And really, what they were doing is just, uh, I guess, curing a little bit of uh, their sickness through the vitamin C that they would obtain from the lime, you know, and all of that hydration that they would get from the water that they mix with them because of all of that, you know? After all of that time, as I was saying that rum was not something that people wanted to have, we said, hey, Don Facundo Bacardi so he went on that journey to make the rum not only some 
some drinkable spirit for everybody. But like back in those days, gin was for the higher class people, and then vodka was for the lower people. So there was a gap in the market, in the middle for people, for the middle class, for every, for every normal person, okay? So that's how we began that journey of uh, crafting Bacardi rum. But as any great vision that you might have in life, you can't really do that by yourself. You need support, you need strong players with you in the game. And that is when Amalia Lucia Victoria Moro came into the scene. That was Mr. Don Fernando's wife. And what do, you, what do you think that she did? Well, let me tell you, back in those days, uh, her family was very wealthy. And her godmother, unfortunately, passed away. But that left Amelia with a lot of wealth. And it was really rare for women in that time to obtain any kind of any kind of wealth, let alone as much as she got. But instead of being like, oh, I got all this money, I'm out of here. Man. Let me leave you with your craziness. She said, you know what, Mr. Fagundo, Fagundo, I, will, I believe in your dreams. And you know what? They obtained the very first distillery in Santiago de Cuba. This is a depiction of what the distillery looked like back in the day. Now this property was seized after revolution, okay, and the family fled Cuba, fled Cuba. And this is what the distillery looked like on the inside as well. So, as I was saying, she was, uh, she was like a this company very first investor, my friends, because, you know, not only did she believe in her husband's dreams, she also, she also invested in her family's future. And I'm sure that as you're walking in here, you're thinking, oh, okay, what is up with the back? There is a back every single way. We've got it, we've got our advantages. There's an abstract shape of a body in the pavilion. It's in every single one of our bottles. Well, let me tell you, back in the day when they bought this distillery, as they were walking in, you know, when you're doing a new place that you own, they were walking in and seeing the place. And Amelia, Doña Amelia, she found a colony of fruit bats hanging from the raft of the ceilings, everybody. And when she saw this, she immediately associated it with a, as, a, as a good omen. Because back in those days in Cuban, Taino, and Spanish culture, the bat symbolized three things. That is good, good health, good fortune, and family unity. So it just made sense to represent the company with this symbol in such a way, you know? Especially after, you know, a couple of drinks here and there, you're getting to know the people around you, but at the end of the night, you still, you feel like you are family with each other, okay? And also, it was very convenient because back in those days in Cuba, people were illiterate, they weren't able to read. So as soon as they stepped that bag into their bottle of Bacardi, people would associate the rum with the bat, and then they would go into every bar and they'd say, Dame el rum del murciano, or give me the rum of the bat. And to this very way, you can be in Australia, you can be in Asia, you can be in the United States, Latin America, and you can still go into any bar and you can say, Dame el rum del murciano, give me the rum of the bat. And by that, it is the good rum to be shared with my friends. So now, who is ready to try a little bit of that Bacardi elixir? Please come on with me. Let's gather around here. Everybody take your glass. Take your glass because we have something specially reserved for all of you. And it is our Bacardi special reserve. Now, this uh, specific rum, it's only exclusive to this distillery. You will not find it any other really? place in the world but Casa Bacardi here in Catania, Puerto Rico, okay? And I want to ask you, how many of you know how rum is made? All questions, all answers are valid, no wrong questions. No, 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 that's what you're here for, right? That's what you're here for. <laughs> all right, so rum is made of three ingredients, three main mm. ingredients, and that is going to be your water, your molasses, and your uh, yeast. I will say molasses twice. And, and that's going to be our yeast, and the way that it works is it begins with the molasses. Now the molasses is really dense, it's really thick, so we need to bring in the water to break it down, so then the yeast is able to consume it. So think of the yeast as like little lumpa lumpas that get into the molasses, they eat up all of that sugar, and they turn it into alcohol, guys. 
That is what we call the fermentation. And the end product of that, of that is the distiller's beer. Now that is unlike, that's not like any beer that you and I want to have. It's and also it's really low on alcohol. It's twelve percent with fourteen percent of alcohol. So we want to bring those volumes of alcohol up. So what happens with that distiller's beer? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Before I continue, let's just everybody take our glasses and in good Latino culture, please bring your glasses up and say salute. Eight to uh, 16 years. 
Okay, so now, how, what did everybody thought about that thing, special reserve? Everybody like it? Yeah. Yeah. So what's special about this special reserve is that it is the only one in the whole line of rocks that after it's been put through the destillation, fermentation, and all of that, and the aging inside the barrels, uh, after that is all done, we have a finishing in a Cherry Oloroso Spanish wine casket, okay? So that stays there for four weeks to absorb all of that sweetness of the wine as well. Okay, so that is what really is special here about this unique uh, and exclusive bottle that we have here in Casa La Cali, which I've got, I've got to mention all of you, you're able to take it home pre-made uh, at the gift shop for $160, and you're also able to bottle it yourself and put on wax and the label and everything for the same price, everybody. Yeah, I'll give it 60. There's uh, basically, just basically a little information if you want to take that home with you all. Now, uh, why do you use coconut shell charcoal? Well, that is the filtration process that Don Facundo uh, created in order that after we have already distilled all of that rum, we are able, and now we have a clar clarified all of that distillers beer, with that filtration process, we're able to take out all of the impurities that we don't want in the rum. So it's basically to just make it smoother to the taste, you know, and to remove all of the things that we don't want in it before we need to blend it. All right, so now that I have told you a little bit about fermentation, distillation, and the aging and all of that, I want all of you to come with me and see it, okay? See it for yourselves. Let's go around the distillery. Let's take a look at all these places where everything goes down. And let, and then, let's go on to our mixology. So please, don't go in the behind the What have you got there, Bob? Well, this is our free, free drink here at Bacardi, and this is called a Tropical Sunrise. I haven't tasted it yet, but uh, she started with a uh, half of an orange slice, and she poured a shitload of rum onto the top of it. What kind of rum? Uh, it was just the... Uh, was it the white, white or was it gold? White, the white, white rum. Okay. Uh, and then she, uh, she uh, squished it. Uh, not with, with that little, what's that called thing? The, uh, the, the squizzle, no, what's the squizzle thing? The, the muddler? The muddler. Yeah, she squished it with the muddler. And she poured this passion fruit. There's some passion fruit on here. Passion fruit juice? Yeah, passion fruit juice. Oh. Then, to the side, she poured some grenadine. But she put it down the side, it fell to the bottom, and then she took the coin side of the swizzler stick, very carefully slid it down the side and stirred it on the bottom so you get this multi-colored label layered uh, drink. Wow. Uh, but uh, I don't think we're ever getting out of here because it was a shitload of rum she poured in here. She started out with uh, the, the 50 milliliter side, and then she poured that in, and, and she just kept on pouring and pouring and pouring. And she came back a little bit later and poured some more in there. Uh -oh. But so, she was making two. No, this was in there just one glass. Oh, no. this, is, this is what she did with one glass. Well, so what's the uh, verdict? What's the verdict? Not bad. And what is it actually? What is it? What is it you're drinking? What's the name of this drink? Oh, I told you. It's a uh, tropical sunrise. Tropical sunrise. You can see tropical sunrise. So it's got the multi layers of colors. And there's mine just waiting to be drank. We have uh, food here. We didn't, never made it over to the food, but uh, there's some food to uh, help soak, soak up uh, some of your alcohol. <laughs> Maybe. 